Hello, this is Sevier from Moxa Australia team. And in this video, I will demonstrate how to use precision time protocol to synchronize clocks on substation devices. This is especially important for topologies with a process bus, which according to IEC 61850-5, require time synchronization accuracy to be within just one microsecond. Precision Time Protocol, or PTP for short, also known as IEEE 1588, is the technology normally used to fulfill such a requirement. Let's see how it works and how to configure it. A typical clock synchronization topology has the following components. A time server that receives time from global navigation satellite system, local Ethernet network, and devices that act as time clients. PTP devices periodically exchange messages for synchronization purposes, and the underlying algorithm takes into account network propagation delay and other variables. One of the key reasons why PTP achieves very high synchronization accuracy is the active involvement of network switches in the process. In a typical substation application, every switch along the path of synchronization measures path delay of every link and time the packet spends inside the switch. These accumulated delays are written directly into the correction field, which allows time clients to calculate time offset very precisely. Ethernet switches in this scenario have a role of so-called transparent clock and therefore need to support PTP protocol with hardware-based time stamping, using specialized hardware components for each Ethernet port. We are going to use part of the Moxa U demo equipment and our scaled-down topology for demonstration includes a GPS Grandmaster clock with PTP interface, Moxa PTG510 DIN rail PRP HSR switch, Moxa PTG7728 rack mount modular switch, and a feeder protection IED as a PTP client. Let's start configuration by reviewing Grandmaster clock settings. The clock has IP address for management purposes. And this is the unique clock identity that every PTP device must have. In this case, it's based on MAC address with two extra bytes in the middle. PTP protocol provides a lot of different options that can be changed to achieve certain industry requirements. A set of agreed PTP options is called a profile. And for this demo, we are going to use power utility profile defined by IEC 61850-9-3. This profile uses Ethernet as transport protocol for PTP messages, peer-to-peer -peer delay mechanism, and 93 as the default domain. These parameters should match across the synchronization domain. Now let's log in to the Moxa switch. I'll start with PTG510 and navigate to System, IEEE 1588 PTP, PTP settings page. Here I need to enable PTP globally and select the same power profile that was configured on Grandmaster Clock. Make sure that we are using peer-to-peer -peer path delay mechanism, transparent clock role, and domain number 93. Once PTP settings are applied, I can proceed and enable PTP on the ports. The clock is connected to port G7, and the next switch is connected to G8. So I'll just enable PTP on those two ports. After applying these settings, we can see that G7 is receiving synchronization signal from the clock and transmitting it downstream to port G8. Next, let's repeat this configuration on rack mount PTG7728 switch. I'll enable PTP, select IEC 61850-9-3 profile, ensure that transparent clock mode is used, peer-to-peer -peer mechanism is already locked by the profile, domain is the same as on the rest of the devices, and Ethernet as transport protocol is also automatically set. After applying, I'll go to PTP port settings to enable protocol on port 3, which is connected to DIN rail switch, and port 1-1, which is connected to the protection IED. The status column again shows the direction of the synchronization traffic, and it looks as expected. There's a dedicated LED indicator for PTP status. It turns amber when there's no synchronization, blinks in the process of it, and once pass delay is stable and below a threshold, LED becomes steady green, which is a good sign and means that PTP works fine. 
Consider this as an additional troubleshooting tool that shows the current state of synchronization on each switch. Speaking of troubleshooting, if we go back to the web user interface, synchronization status can be observed on this page. This is the port which is connected to the current Grandmaster. The state is locked, which is same as steady green sync LED. And we can also see a mean path delay in nanoseconds. Of course, the ultimate goal is to synchronize clocks of end devices. So let's take a look at the IED. This unit has IEC 61850-9-3 Power Utility Profile supported and PTP is enabled on Interface 1 and 2. It uses the same Domain 93 that we configured on the clock and switches. Its current status is Slave, which means it is synchronizing to the clock. This is the current offset from Master in nanoseconds, Path Delay in microseconds, and finally, Parent clock ID is the identity of Grandmaster that we saw earlier. To sum up, we've successfully set up PTP time synchronization in our small network using IEC 61850-9-3 profile. And this provides less than one microsecond accuracy that is needed for process bus applications. Although PTP configuration is fairly simple for this scaled down topology, there's definitely more to it when it comes to larger systems, especially when different redundancy protocols being used like PRP and HSR and different vendors are mixed. So if you want to know more about PTP operation, design considerations and have hands-on experience with it, please reach out to your local Moxa representative. We have engineers to help you, and we also have a specialized training course about IEC 61850 communication networks. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.